Joining me now from Lynchburg, Virginia, former congressman for Virginia's 7th District and the dean of the business school at Liberty University, Dave Bratt, Ph.D. Dave, who could have seen this one coming? I think you and I could have both seen this one coming when, when Barack Obama effectively nationalized student loans, brought it in under government control, and now you have these fellow radicals coming in saying, hey, we're just going to wipe out this debt and then let the taxpayers pay for it. Yeah, no, you're, you're right, Graham. And it's, it's been brewing for 30 or 40 years at Harvard, Yale, and Princeton, all the elite schools, and then K-12. to And they missed, I used to work at the World Bank 25 years ago, they missed the biggest free market miracle that's taken place in the last 20 years. China and India, uh, two and a half billion children of God, went from $1 a day, right, 1000 bucks a year per person, to now making over $10,000 a year by going to free markets. China opened up the economy, not the politics yet, but the economy. India did the same. And while they're growing at 10 percent, the United States of America, the greatest country on earth, is moving towards socialism and shutting down freedom and shutting down markets and talking down businessmen and business women, and teaching in business school that business is bad and not teaching any business ethics. And so, yeah, I mean, you, you're you spot on and it's it's been brewing and now the, the, the results have come in. And so Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders and, and the rest of them, they're all latching on to this, to uh, a universal free college. <laughs> I just laugh whenever I hear that, Dave, you know, free, because we all know what that means. But for Bernie Sanders, uh, I'm not sure about Warren's plan, but for Bernie Sanders, well, he just wants to add another tax on Wall Street. So it's no big deal because they're rich, right? No, Wall Street would be you and me. Wall Street would be anybody who has a 401k or an IRA. Yeah. And, and, and the most fundamental concept you just hit is they talk about education, but they do not have education in mind. They have the funding of leftist bureaucrats that the money on university campuses does not go to education anymore. It goes to more deans of everything under the sun you can think of. Right. And so when they're talking about reducing the cost of student debt, there's a very simple way to do that. And if you went back to basics and did education again, that would cut the price in half to the students out there. Do you look at this the way I do, that this is really a godsend for Donald Trump and his reelection effort? And that is, this couldn't paint a more stark contrast between these yeah. people that want to push this country uh, off the socialist cliff and a president who wants to defend the United States Constitution and the free markets. Yeah, well, the president put through his tax cut, the economy's roar, and the stock market just on the announcement of the tax cuts jumped up through the roof. The evidence couldn't be any more clear. And so, yes, if policy mattered, uh, it'd be a slam dunk, right? If people just looked at policy and their pocketbooks and their kids' futures. Uh, but unfortunately, the left has gone to some pretty dire you know, strategy in terms of uh, invoking racism, sexism, you're evil, et cetera, if you disagree with them, because they can't talk policy. And so uh, hopefully the American people wake up to this uh, by, by 2020. I think, they, I think they will. Fiscally speaking, and, and I, I'm not blaming you, but I look at the 115th Congress and I say to myself on fiscal yep. matters, on immigration matters certainly as well, what a blown opportunity maybe of a lifetime. And you remember uh, when you were a, a member of Congress and I would say, hey, please, you know, the window's closing. We're not going to get. And of course, in the end, the Paul Ryan uh, leadership uh, uh, folded. And do you believe that? If, first of all, I believe that the president should play hardball with with the Democrats on the budget and the debt ceiling. Do you agree with that? Yeah, oh, absolutely. And I, I've had very smart Republican business people say, Dave, you're, you're too much of a right winger. You need to compromise on the budget. I say, OK, so let's compromise. The Republicans wanted a nine hundred billion dollar deficit. The Democrats wanted a one point one trillion dollar deficit. Should I compromise and go for the clean one trillion? And I said, you're way too smart. I know you're smarter than I am. Right. These, these business titans are telling me to just be, hang a little loose, Dave, you know, just compromise. You know what they mean? They just want some ease, right? right? They want some more liquidity in the markets or whatever. And I said, look, my job is the U.S. balance sheet. I understand you have pressures on your balance sheet, but I fought like crazy. I voted no. And uh, I, I fought the, the good fight, and you have too. And so I, I appreciate the pressure you put on everybody. Well, we're not giving up. Um, I, I'm still hoping for a, a, a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution because it seems pretty clear to me, Dave, that that's the only way we're going to get the spending under control. Dave Brad, thank you.
Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One American News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One American News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.